Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Thanks for coming in tonight. We are working on quilting my hourglass block quilt. You can see we started, let's see, here we go. Started quilting with some shiny, shiny metallic uh, thread last night and we're gonna continue that tonight. We drew lines on and we're sewing on either side of those lines. So we're gonna do that more tonight. Uh, we'll have to draw a few more lines, but we'll start with sewing right away and uh, we'll see how far we can get on this guy. So thanks again for coming in. If you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. All right, thanks guys for popping in. I'm gonna flip you around and we will get going here. Okay, getting going right away. Hey Sherry, thanks for joining tonight. All right, so I have a few more lines on here. And oh, you guys, so I did put my thread in a little, uh, just so it was sideways now and it can go run up all here because it's been getting twisted. So we'll see if that helps at all tonight. So a little adjustment, we'll see, see how it goes. All right, here we can, here we can see what we're doing. So I've drawn a line on, a diagonal line, and I've been stitching on either side of the line. And we have two more lines, both of them in the border. And uh, once we're done with these two, then we can move on uh, to drawing more lines. So, all right, let's get going. Turn this guy on. All right, we're just gonna see how many straight lines can we sew in an evening. Oh my gosh, you guys, I already have to lose the sweater. <laughs> Having a quilt on me for like three seconds and I'm overheating, okay. Here we are. Check to make sure that my fabric's not folded over. And we'll get started. I probably could start more right on the line, but there's just such a little space here that I think it's easier for me to just, just start it from back here. All right, let's get this flat to begin with. Oop. And straight. Oh, I'm a little off. There we go, back on. So I ordered today, I ordered some little grippers to help me quit quilt, to help me like move this around because my hands are definitely sliding. I'm having to grab the actual fabric and I'd like to just move it around like this. I did not buy gloves. Uh, I have a hard time with gloves. I have small hands and Gloves always have like this much, too much finger on the end of it. So I don't know, I, I decided not to go the glove route. I got these, oh gosh, now I don't even know what they're called. I'll have to show you guys uh, when, when I get it. Yep, no table yet. I don't have my, uh, I don't have my, my table yet either. So that's, that's ordered. I ordered an extension table. That's those like acrylic tables that go onto your sewing machine. Uh, so this is level, you know, because then I can push down in here because right now, right now I don't have much space to move this around. Uh, so I, from the same company, and I'll show you when I get them, I ordered these acrylic kind of hand thing. So you, it's flat acrylic, but they have grippers on the bottom, kind of like how are those stickers that, uh, that we've been using for our rulers kind of like those, but screwed in. So there are two little acrylic things that you can move around and I got those in lieu of uh, gloves. So we'll see if those work. Cause I don't really want to, I don't really want to get gloves with the rubber bottoms. Um, but I do, I do want something to help me move this around. And it'll be, I, I, and I actually don't think I can really use them until I get my extension table as well. So man, I'm checking the mail every day and I'm, I'm hoping I can get it. Yeah, so yeah, gloves make, make my hands sweat. Yeah, I mean, I haven't used gloves all that often for this before, but I know that I just don't do well with, with gloves. They're, they're just an impossible fit and I know I'll be fumbling. I don't like, um, 
I don't like not being able to feel things. <laughs> so I think that that would affect that quite a bit. Ooh, ooh, I pulled this a little bit. So I just broke, I just broke the, uh, this metallic floss for the first time, but I think it's going to be okay. Once I hit, once I hit the, uh, once I get off of my three layers, like once I hit just the batting layer, it, the tension gets really kind of goofy. Yeah. The tension gets funny right when I, right when I end. Luckily, I think we're still sewn here, so we'll be okay. But, um, I did just break it here. So that's something I have to look, look for once I get to this. Maybe I should back tack it when I get here. Uh, I might have to do that just in case. So, all right, let's zoom back up to the top. Get this guy off of here. But yeah, so I'm, I have high hopes for these little acrylic things. They're literally like these little kind of bean shaped things. They're about this big. They look like with little rubber guys on the bottom and you can lift them up and move them wherever. But, uh, I have, I have a feeling that will work a hair better for me than, than gloves. So I don't know. We'll see. Trying, trying new things. It's an excuse to excuse to try out new products. Which is kind of fun. And you know, all this quilting that I'm doing now or will be doing, uh, I don't I don't do all that often. So I'm new to all the little gadgets and doickies and stuff. So it's fun, fun to try it out. I find the coolest things. Well, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Oh, I am pretty excited about my, my extension table though, because it's an adjustable extension table and I've only, this is the only one of those that I've found. I did a little, you know, Google searching, Amazon searching before, before buying it. Uh, and I, I couldn't find it on, on Amazon or any place like that. I only found it at one place or two places, but one place it was out of stock. But anyway, it has, oh, it's acrylic still, and it has all sorts of adjustable parts so it can fit any sewing machine or, you know, just about any sewing machine. Otherwise you have to tell, tell a place your actual machine and model and all that, and then they make you one. But I didn't like that idea because, oh, I love the extension table. I hope so. Uh, but I didn't like the idea of getting a custom one done because then what if I switch machines or if I want to bring the extension table somewhere and I don't have the machine, I am going to try back tacking here once. Um, so I don't, I didn't like the idea of a custom extension table. So I found this one that is totally adjustable and it's still pretty big. I didn't get the largest size cause it wouldn't fit on some, some of the smaller tables I have. If, in case I move somewhere else, uh, you know, besides the big kitchen table here. So I don't know, excited for that. I was hoping I'd have that already, but not yet. And the, where I bought it from, the tracking is kind of a weird system, so I don't even know where it is. But I'm excited. Excited for that and for these little gripper things. Uh, I might do a little unboxing video when I get the extension table though and and setting it up. I think that'd be kind of fun. So we'll see. Waiting for it to come, whenever that is. You have the quilting, oh, you've seen the quilting grippers. You think they have a frog in the name. They're different than that. Um, I've, I saw those, they are, they're different than those. Um, but I know what you're talking about. Um, similar concept, but it's not the frog one. But yeah, similar, similar concept. It's clear. The ones that I'm getting are clear acrylic and then they have like little rubbers on the bottom. It's it's different than those the frog ones. But I know what you're talking about. I saw that saw that graphic when I was doing my searching. I'm excited about the prospect of of no gloves, but we'll see see how it goes. Ooh, I'm getting a little wobbly here. Hopefully it's okay. A little stretchy maybe here. All right, and 
out to the end. You've seen the quilting group first? Oh yeah. Yeah, sorry, I read that comment already. Yeah, um, I'm stoked. Let's see how we're doing here. Do we have any puckers or anything yet? No, we're looking looking good still, so that's that's exciting. All right, one more on this side, and then we have to we all have to draw a few more up, a few more lines. I might flip the quilt around to do that, but I'll have to remember I still want to quilt from the same side, so I always want to start from this end and end up at the other end. I don't want to start going the opposite direction because that will, in theory, make our quilt a little wobbly, I think. Yeah, like right now the grippers would be nice. All right, I'm getting a little wobbly here. I think I'm gonna remove this pin and we're gonna let it kind of breathe out a little bit. It's going well, Rosalie. Thank you for embroidering. If, if I wanna use a transfer pencil to embroider your own drawing, do you know if I have to use a certain kind of paper? You don't have to use a certain kind of paper for a transfer pencil. I prefer tracing if that's possible versus a transfer pencil or using that uh, sticky, sulky, sticky Fabricel V. It's called um, stick and stitch now. Uh, I don't know, those transfer pencils, I've never really gotten them to work all that, all that well. So, I mean, if you, if it's, if you don't want to use the transfer, the, the sticky Fabricel V uh, embroidery stabilizer, if you don't want to use that, I don't know, I would almost just try and trace it if you can. You can use carbon paper too. I, I would I would maybe use carbon paper before um, a transfer pen too. I don't know, I don't, there's, for some reason, I'm not sure if I like them or not. Uh, do a test for sure. Get a little piece of fabric and draw some lines on there and uh, and do that. How does the survey work? Not sure what you're asking, Sherry. All right. So there we go. We got this side done. So look at all. Oh, autocorrect. I figured. I just wasn't sure. I couldn't figure it out this time what survey would be. All right. There we go. Got our little diagonal started. How many do we got, got going on here? We got one, two, three, four, five. We have five pairs so far. So Next up, let's, we gotta continue drawing these guys now. So let's let's spread this quilt out again. I'll angle you. Oh, how does the sticky fabric selfie work? Oh, okay, so it is an embroidery stabilizer, is technically what it is, but it, it you can print directly to it, or you can trace directly to it, just like tracing paper. So it's it's really, easy to use. Oh, you know what? I drew on this already. Oh, I drew the bottom two. Um, I don't think I just, I don't think I extended it all the way through. Oh, I have it on here, here. Okay. I just have to, I just have to extend, extend it to the top, but I have, I have this one started. So it, the sticky fabric salvi, it prints, you can print it or photocopy right to it or trace, it's very easy to trace to. And uh, then you cut it ar out around your shape and then it sticks to your fabric like a sticker and you can stitch right through it. And then it washes off in water when you're done. And the huge benefit to it is if you have a, a you know, a digital pattern, you don't have to trace. It's just, you just print it out directly to your thing. Uh, so that's, that's the huge benefit of it. I love it. I, I use it all the time for uh, embroidery when I don't have an iron on transfer. All right, uh, let's scooch up a hair more. 
Got to get into these borders yet. Oh, it's awesome, Sherry. It's It really is nice. Nice to use. I, I like it at least. I use it very often. A little off on these, but I think it'll be okay still. All right, let's try and get in the border right to the corner, it looks like. But I'm going to measure again. We were at 3 eighths from from this, oh, 3 eighths from the drawn line. Just to make sure it's kind of somewhat parallel. I don't want all my lines to be veering off all crazy. Yeah, it's a little off anyway. We're going to just go right to the corner and see how that goes. All right, we're a little little off, but I think I think we'll be okay. All right. So, we got this line. Let's extend extend this a little. And maybe we'll stitch these two lines and then well, no, I'll I'll just finish drawing this. For one of the splendid sampler embroidery patterns, there's also applique. Can you applique over the selfie? Um, I wouldn't applique over the selfie. I think I know what one you're talking about. Is that that one with the, it's got a cute little bird and a cute little sewing machine and a little button jar. Uh, that one had applique and, and, uh, applique and embroidery. What I did for that, did I trace that one? I might have traced that. Uh, for that, I would do the Fabricelvi first and uh, I'm just trying to think through that I would maybe do the if you're if you want to use the Faberselvi if you didn't want to trace I would do the Faberselvi first for the embroidered part but then you're gonna have to get the um, applique pieces back drawn back on so after you so like you know it's all gonna melt away the the part that you didn't stitch right so um, you'll have to redraw the applique parts on afterwards, but I'm not sure I would applique with that. Because what, what that's doing, it's going to flake off, and those flakes need to go somewhere. So if it's underneath the fabric, those flakes will just kind of stay underneath the fabric, and I'm not really sure if you want that. All right. Next lines. We're going to just finish drawing these lines on. I don't think there's not too many more. Let's just get her done. Straight up to the top. And uh, if you've been watching some of the Splendid Sampler videos, you'll know that uh, we had some trouble with some of our Faberselvi. That, um, like, it, it melted kind of funny. But I, I've talked to, I've talked to Selkie, and that, uh, that kind isn't out there anymore. And if you, if you get the Stick and Stitch, which is their new branding, it's the same exact thing. It's it's still Sticky Faberselvi. They've just uh, they're catering to embroiderers now, so they're calling it Stick and Stitch, Stick apostrophe N and then space and then Stitch. And we have it in we have it on our website too. The the Stick and Stitch on PenguinandFish.com if you wanted to look into it. But all uh, they I've gotten the word from from Selkie that all of the stick and stitch is is good. It's not going to be weird like how, how it was a little bit for us during the Splendid Sampler, some of those. So no fear on that front. All right. I'm not really checking to see if they're parallel to the other lines anymore. I'm just going to assume that it's close enough. <laughs> Maybe not the best idea, but it's not like my sewing is all that straight. I don't know. I think I think this will be fine. I will have to do that towards the end though now because I don't have I don't have these lines to go off of. All right. Three more 
little bits here, and then we should be done. Kind of just eyeballing it. All right. We're gonna have to roll this guy up and stick it in the in the machine. That'll be kind of fun. I'm gonna keep rolling it up as I go, just because I already started from this end. In theory, you probably want to go the opposite direction, like roll it all up and then do this side first and then keep unrolling it, but we didn't do it that way. <laughs> oh well. All right, now let's now let's measure these so they're kind of parallel. All right, I think that'll do. We'll extend this, and then I think we got one more to draw on here. Oh, but I'm glad I didn't wait to do all this. I'm, I'm really happy that we got sewing yesterday. That was fun to get going on this. All right. And another, and oh, we might, we might actually get two in here yet. One tiny little one yet. All right, flatten it out. Give it a little measure. Okay, about there. And I think we'll get a little tiny bit over here yet. All right, yep, a little tiny triangle at the end. That'll be kind of fun. All right, we are drawn. So uh, um, next time we'll have to do this is when we go the opposite direction. But for now, I do not need that ruler anymore. Okay, where did we leave off over here? Scrunch it up on this side. And this side, I think I'm going to just kind of gently roll. All right, this is our last one, so next up. Now I'm gonna be keeping on going that way. All right, back to the machine, let's do this. Oh, this is a lot of quilt in my, in my lap right now. All right, we're doing it a little differently. We're going from right to left now instead of left to right. Let's get it started here. All right, I think we are good to go. Oh, now I gotta, I gotta pull over on, on this side a little bit. Have my hand over here. Let's lose this guy right away. All right, I think we're still working okay. This is going to be the uh, most awkward one, I think, just because it's the longest. These are the two longest lines that I'll, that I'll have to stitch right in the middle here. Spend most of your time just getting situated. I 
feels good to be this far on the on the quilt though. I'm excited. We'll get the other side stitched and uh, the other the other angle. I think it's gonna look really pretty with the little square diamondy things going through it. I don't know. We'll see. I'll also get a sense of how much fabric can be rolled up into uh, the neck of this sewing machine. Going over a lot of that bulk. I'm glad I'm sewing around it and not right through it. Ooh, how are we doing yet? It feels a little funny. Nope, I think we're good. We'll have to check the check the back, see if the tension's okay after this one yet. Love that sparkly cream fabric. I think the green's gonna look really fun on there. Oh, thanks, Sherry. Yeah, I'm pretty excited that uh, we did this metallic thread. I feel like now I at least have like a hint of experience with, with the metallic thread. And uh, I think it just looks really fun with, with all this sparkle. Sparkle and shine of this quilt. So I'm just looking at my thread. It is still a little twisty. Um, so maybe after the next row, I'll thread it again and we'll start kind of fresh. Oh, Sherry, <laughs> I just, you're just ahead of me. I get, I see the comments like seven seconds later. So that's funny that you asked about that. Oh, that's nice, Janet. I'm glad you signed up. Oops, something feels funny. Huh. I don't think it is though. Oh, I know what's happening. It's falling off the other end of the table, so there's it's pulling, pulling that way a little bit. Like, why does this feel funny? That's why. But I think we're good. All right, I'm gonna back tack this again, just because I'm not not trusting it on here. All right, there we go. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. I'd like to do more of those though, because I sometimes I you know just want to make stuff, and I don't know. I'm in the mode of like I need to clean the house and get rid of things, so. Uh, that's why I'm like doing some giveaways and stuff. All right, I'm just checking the tension of this again. I don't know, this is looking kind of tight. Yeah, I don't know, I think, I think the tension might be getting a little funny. Yeah, it looks like it's pulling too much. Uh, which means I have to loosen the tension. Yeah, all of this seems seems a little off. So I think we might be okay. We might be good enough with with that row, but we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to do a test right here. So let's get my little scrappy bit out. I'm gonna just uh, we're gonna cut our thread, and we are gonna do that untwisting now, and then check our tension again. So all right, the time has come. Yeah, we're getting a little twisted. Maybe that's affecting the tension a little bit. We will see. Wow, the oh, I was going to say the bobbin looks really good yet, but I forgot that the bobbin doesn't have the metallic in, so of course that looks okay still. All right, let's uh, get my little... I put it in this cup here and it didn't look like it was getting as twisted as last night, but it is slightly twisted and I might just cut off that area and start fresh here. Yeah, because I don't think it's twisted on the on the spool at all. But yeah, this one's getting a little little wrinkly. All right, let's try it again. I'll thread this up. Oop, drop it in the cup. 
There we go. Oh, it's kind of twisting. Oh, you know, it's twisting in the cup a little bit. So that's not, that's not right. Well, so this thread probably does need a uh, horizontal um, spool thing, spool holder, which I don't have. I'm sure it's not called a spool holder, <laughs> but you guys know what I'm saying. Actually, it might be from, my tension might be a little weird because it's in that cup. So, all right, let's, let's do a tension test here. All right, let's give it a go. Uh, what brand metallic thread? So I've just had this sitting around. It's a signature laser bright, oh, by a and E. I'll show you guys when I'm, when I'm done here. Um, it's just connected right now, so hold on. Um, all right, I am just gonna do it at the tension it was first. We'll just take a look at that. Okay, yeah, I can still see, like you can see the bobbin thread I don't know, can you guys see that? You can see the bobbin thread popping through a little bit. So the top is pulling a little bit much. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go quite a bit looser and see what happens. Oop, gotta turn it on. And I ran out of uh all my leaders are connected to the other parts. Gotta snip this guy off. My other ones must be on the oops, missed. Must be on the other side of the quilt yet. Oh, well. A spool pin, is that what? Okay, that's what it's called. A spool pin. I need a horizontal spool pin, I think, for this thread. All right, so I made the tension a whole lot looser. Okay, it definitely looks better on the top. I think I maybe made a, made it a little too loose. So here you can, here's the top again. You can compare though. So here's what it was. Let me get really close, see if you guys can see. All right, you can kind of see the back popping through. Here you can't as much. So this is definitely better, but is it popping through the back? It is kind of a hair, so let's let's go kind of in the middle of what I did here. We'll do one last one and see if that works. Go over on this side. Well, I'm glad we're ch uh, finding this later, or like earlier than later though, because this would be a bummer to go through the whole quilt and find that the tension is off. All right, looks pretty good on the back. We're checking this row now. And I think, yeah, I think we're better. Yeah, I think we're good now. So I did, I did loosen the tension a little bit. Uh, from what it was. So, all right. I guess this, you gotta do that every once in a while. All right, next row. Let's just keep going, see how it works. I don't think the row that I did is bad enough to have to pull out, pull it, pull it out entirely. Um, I guess we'll see. I think I am going to give this a little wash when we're done and, uh, because I want to kind of check to see if all the metallic floss kind of stays well. Just so when one of you guys get it and, and you try and wash it, it doesn't all like fall apart. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give it a little wash, which is kind of nice. I like when it's uh, it gets all a little puffier uh, when you when you wash it. And um, then all these lines will come off as well. All these water soluble lines. 
So again, this is the longest line. Oh, I should check the back for puckers and stuff when we're done with this row too. This pairing, row pairing, I guess is a way of saying it. We're echoing the ditch. Um, so we're not stitching in the ditch, we are, we are going right next to it, mimicking it. All right. That pins out of there. Another pin in my way. I'm just throwing the pins behind me right now. I don't want to throw them around me because my quilt will pick them all up and I'll stab myself. So I'm just tossing them on the table behind me. Came across videos on YouTube. Oh, for superior thread. Oh, we talked about metallic thread. Ah, I'll have to go check it out. So that's what I'm using. It's the superior, uh, this metallic, it's, it's the metallic filament really it's the it's the flat super shiny thin stuff so a lot of times metallic thread is like has a core and it has metallic stuff wound around it this is just the the metallic filament so i mean if you if you're looking at what kind but i'll have to check that out too i mean we're in it now and it seems to be working okay i did do a little bit of blog research and there is a few people that talked about metallic thread a little bit and you know, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, but um, lengthening the stitch length uh, is helpful. And, you know, I'm using a, a brand new top stitch needle, which has a larger eye. They actually, there is actually a metallic needle that I didn't have one, so that's why I'm not using it. Um, but the metallic needle even has a larger eye, I, I believe. And what else did I read? Oh, that you want... Um, kind of a thin bobbin thread. You don't want to use metallic for the bobbin. So I hear, ooh, going through a bulky thing. And um, stitching slower is the other thing. Oh, and then making the tension looser. Oops. So we just had to do that now, make the tension a little looser. When I started though, it didn't seem like I needed to do that. I did some tests and I didn't, it didn't turn out that I needed the tension less. But maybe now that I've moved it to the cup behind me, um, maybe that affected the tension a little, I don't know. We're square now though, so let's hope that sticks. Ooh, more bulk, lots of bulk. But yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to watch that video. Pam. Oh, we're getting there with this one. Into the border. Yeah, the tension is pretty funny at the end of this one. Maybe that'll loosen up a little bit. At the worst, I'll just have to sew this uh, line here again, the one next to this one that we're doing now. I have a feeling if I pull on it, it'll, it'll break on me. There's probably more drag too, since you're doing the center. Oh, that could be too, Gina. More drag, because we're working on the center. Could be. So let's let's check over at this right now. Okay. So that was the most center of what we'll be doing. Uh, stitching is much better. It's definitely not so tight. Yeah, I'm really kind of nervous about this this one this one that we just did. And I'm pulling on it. It seems okay still though. I don't want to push my luck. 
yeah, I think I think we'll be fine. Let's check the back quick, see how we're doing. Back looks good so far, I think. Uh-oh, there's a pucker. Oh, well. So we're going to have one pucker so far, guys. So this is what I mean by a pucker. So it just folded over. Although that's still in the, that's in the same, that's, it's in the same stitch. I bet you I can fix that. Let's see. I think I can spread, spread it a little bit. Like, I, I think this might wash away, actually. See, like, it's it's kind of gone on that bottom a little bit. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's not really there. There, you can kind of tell. Maybe the lighting's not that great, but it, it's, it's flattened out quite a bit, so. I'm not going to worry about that. That's not a huge pucker. It's not folding over quite a bit. And yeah, I, I do actually think that this, that's more of a wrinkle. It's going to go away. Um, in the wash, or it'll just get exaggerated. All the poofiness will get um, exaggerated in the wash. So I think that will be fine. All right, let's get this guy off. Well, cut off while I'm up here. All right, I think we're ready to do the next bit. So let's roll this guy up. We're going okay. I think we can get a couple more done tonight. There, now it should be uh, less, it should be a little easier, I'm hoping, because we are not in a big center area again. Although now we have the big uh, bulk in the neck of my machine here. All right. Oop, turn it on, always helps. Man, really looking forward to that extension table though. Yeah, I think we'll do an unboxing of it. I'll, I'll, whenever I get it, I'll go live and do a little unboxing of it because I think it'll be interesting trying to set it up for the first time. Because it is, uh, it's that adjustable one, like I said. So there's a lot of, a lot of different little plates that move around so it can fit your machine just right. It's not, it's not one that's fit for my machine. It can be fit for any machine. All right, let's do this. Oh, thanks for sharing the video, guys. I appreciate that. Get more people uh, sewing, more people crafting is always, always a good thing, I think. Always uh, the neatest thing for someone to discover that they can make things and be creative and uh, that they made something that wasn't wasn't there before and that it's relaxing and you can still you can get stuff done while you watch TV. <laughs> I'll be doing uh, a lot of embroidery in the next week or so. I'm actually, I'm still busy drawing new embroidery patterns uh, right now, but I'll be embroidering them all next week during the day. And um, we're putting a pitch together for, for Joann's again. I think I talked about that a little bit. So uh, in July, we, we are headed to Joann's to, to talk with them at corporate again about some new new embroidery patterns so I'm busy working on those and soon I'll have to stitch them all uh, yes anything to justify binge watching and uh, that's what I'm getting to so uh, I am currently binge watching while I work because you know it's not often that I get to do work uh, that I don't have to concentrate so much that I can be binge watching. Like I'm not writing, I can't have anything on when I'm writing and, and that sort of thing, but I am binge watching all of uh, Game of Thrones again. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll, I'll get it done by the time the new ones come out, but we'll see. There's a lot of embroidery coming up. So who knows, I might, I might mega binge watch all of it. I'm, I'm in towards the end of the second season. I've seen them all already and I, I think I've actually binge watched them all. Um, all before. 
And um, so it's fun to watch them again, though. Could you do a pattern of a Yorkie? Bonnie, I have a pattern of a Maltese that could pretty easily, I think, be kind of turned into a Yorkie just by changing the colors a little bit. That one I already have, so you can check that out um, on my website if you wanted. I have that as an iron-on, iron-on pattern. But I had a, a request for a beagle, and I am working on a beagle. Oh, you you watch Game of Thrones back to back five times now. Nice. <laughs> I I've watched it um, twice all the way through from beginning to end. So this will be my third time just to catch up on everything before it comes out again. And I mean, I've read the books too, so that was helpful the first couple times through. Um, but you know, there's always like, oh yeah, I forgot that whole storyline and that storyline and I want to know what's going on when, when it comes out again. So binge watching that. How about a corgi pattern? Oh, you know what? There was going to be a corgi. I have a couple dog patterns and I think I nixed the corgi out of it. Um, but I will reuse the corgi. So, uh, you can hope to have a corgi soon. I, I do have one drawn up already. I just don't have it as a pattern yet. But yep, got a corgi going. I have a pattern that has a few dogs in. Oh, your dog's name is Tyrion, nice. Uh, I have a, a couple I have one pattern that has several dogs in, and it had a corgi, but I needed to get rid of one. And I liked it, but because of where everything else was in the pattern, that one had to go. But I'll reuse it. Uh, whatever I don't end up using, I want to make, um, I'll make PDF patterns, so they're available still. I'll, I'll be sure to let you know when that is, too. Oh, you've not read the books yet, but will just haven't had the time. Yeah, the books definitely veer off in the last couple seasons, and you know to be completely different, really. So the last few seasons, you just gotta, you know, watch and read with a grain of salt, really. But um, it's still really fun to read. I mean, you know, with books, you always get to dig into the characters more, and and that's really fun and. Um, it's fun watching the show and seeing what the book, what's picked up from the book or not. But now, now it's past, um, past the time of the book. Like the book hasn't, <laughs> the author hasn't caught up to, to the show now. <laughs> I actually heard a rumor that he's not, not going to be writing those anymore now that the show's caught up. But I, I don't know. I don't know if any of you guys have heard anything on that. Yeah, I, I like doing that too. I, I like to, in my mind, I like to try and read the book first before um, watching the movie, but that doesn't always happen. Or sometimes I watch the movie and then realize after when someone tells me that it was based on a book. So I just, I don't know all the time. Ooh, my pedal is getting warm. I think we'll finish up this line and probably call it an evening and then we can start fresh on a new line tomorrow. So tomorrow I think we will we'll finish up this direction and I think we'll let's try and get the lines drawn on for the opposite direction. Then we can really crank this out. Let's see today is Tuesday. Oh man I think we're gonna have this we're gonna have the quilting done by the end of the week for sure. I think we'll have the binding maybe even sewn on by Friday. I don't know. We'll see. We're getting there. That's for sure though. All right. Something's stuck. I think it's just in my lap too heavy. Why don't you turn the quilt so there's less? Um, you don't want to do that because you want to start from the same side every single time. Like I don't want to start from the other side because it'll kind of, uh, make the quilt wobbly. Like, uh, Gosh, what's a good way of saying it? I'll, I'll have to look it up again, but um, 
what I was reading is that you always want to start on the same side because then your your pull is in the same direction. So I could flip it around, but then it would be going, it would be pulling the opposite direction of what I've what I've done already. So I don't know, that's kind of why. I will I'll look up the extended version of that answer. Uh, but but that's why you kind of you want it you want your lines to start and end on the same same edge typically with straight line stuff so we'll do the same when we rotate it around 90 degrees we'll start on one side and always end up on the opposite side we won't ever rotate them I actually have quite a bit of space in here. So here's here's where I'm at right now. There's there's tons of space in here yet. So um, which is making me feel good about the potential of sewing the the splendid sampler in here because I have to I have to quilt my splendid sampler and I was gonna do that with straight lines as well. Yeah, wonky. It'll just get a little it'll pull funny on it. Um. So. This makes me think that I can probably squish my Splendid Sampler quilt in here, potentially. <laughs> we'll see. That'll be another experiment. That I'm intending to stitch in the dick ditch, though, a little bit more than, than here, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'm also not going to use metallic floss or metallic thread for it, so I think uh, I won't have to take as many precautions. I just need a strong, uh, strong new needle, and we should be good to go. I think. I'll clean the machine before we do that as well. I'll clean it up after this. So we are still twisting quite a bit the thread. So I think it's just something I'm going to have to keep on. Um, oops, I forgot to back tack there. Oh well. I think it's just going to be something I have to keep re-threading every once in a while. Oh, the jean quilt is coming. I haven't worked on it um, in a little while. I usually like working on it on Sunday mornings, but I actually, last Sunday morning, I ended up organizing most of my fabric, not all of it. But I did, I bought a whole pile of bins from, from uh, Target and I, I'm just checking over this, I reorganized a whole bunch of fabric. Oh man, I got another one here. Unless that was the one from before. Oh no. So this is a pucker for real and it's stitched down. So, all right, there we got a real pucker. That means a real human made it. <laughs> oh well. So let's see, how many more lines do we have on this thing? Um, okay. We got, so we just finished these. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So we have five more, but they're all rather small. So I think we'll, we'll get through that pretty quickly. We'll do all those tomorrow. And then I think we'll be able to draw the opposite way um, for quite a few. So that'll be exciting. We'll we'll start to see what this design is gonna gonna look like, but we got a good good half of it done, uh, over half of um, you know this side, and you know technically I probably wouldn't need to go the other direction, but we're gonna we're gonna do that. I think it's gonna look cute. I think it looks fun on the back too. You can see see the lines, see the lines starting. It's it's kind of decorative having two lines instead of just one. I like it. All right, guys, I'm gonna flip you around. Oh, you know what? Let's steal this guy right away. We're running out of those there. They're attached to this quilt somewhere else too, I think. Oh, well. All right, I am gonna flip you around and we will call it an evening. Hello, so let me lift this up for you guys. Okay. So here's the quilted part. I don't know if you can really tell in this lighting, but there we go. Starting to see the lines. Oh, it's gonna be this pretty crisscross too. I love the diagonals. I think that's gonna be really, really fun. You can really tell in the border, which is great because the border had no shininess in it at all. 
So to have to be putting some shiny back in there is uh, is kind of neat, I think. Ooh, this is looking really sparkly right now in the light. Fun. Then let's check out the back. There you can see what's going on a little bit more. Yeah, there are some of our lines. Those are looking good. Fun. All right, guys, that is that. Uh, thanks so much again for joining me. I'm I'm stoked to be this far on this quilt, uh, and we we already have. We already have the binding ready to go, so that'll be good. Uh, we'll be able to get that on soon too. We're wrapping up this project, finished quilt almost. That's exciting. Yes, sparkles, so many sparkles. <laughs> so all right, I will get this up on uh, Penguin and Fish movies on YouTube if you want to rewatch it there, and um, it'll be here on Facebook as well. And I will uh, get. Uh, I'll be here again tomorrow at 9:30 p.m. Central. Looking great. Eat. <laughs> I'm guessing that's a typo. Funny. All right. I will catch you guys later. Uh, 9.30 p.m. Central tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.